tonight, closing in on county lines. Good evening. Issues that existed before the pandemic have, of course, not gone away because of it. This morning, the Met Police were out on raids in South East London to tackle county lines, drugs distribution networks which drag children into gangs to sell drugs across the country. Well, a third of the networks are here in London. An operation started at the end of last year has seen 183 people charged with trafficking, but there is much more to do and there's also concern over what will happen when lockdown restrictions are eased. Our senior correspondent Ronke Phillips reports. So Ronke, what are the concerns when lockdown is eventually lifted? That's super lid on drug dealing and even rivalries um, during the lockdown and that's mainly because children, if they can take that person... All right, Ronke, thank you. Next tonight, the current government advice is to work from home if you can, but MPs were told that from today that was no longer an option if they wanted to vote. Uh, any MP who was shielding or caring for others had to stay away and watch as those who could return stood in queues, snaking round the Palace of Westminster and outside. Well, in the last hour, they decided that to vote, you must be there in person, to the anger of some London MPs who say they have no choice but to stay at home. Our political correspondent, Simon. Simon Harris reports. So Simon, not all MPs are happy about that today, but also a row about the Mayor's plans to increase the congestion charge. Yes, and extend the hours from 7am till 10 OK, Simon, thank you. That uh, the coronavirus affects some people worse than others has been known and feared since before the height of the pandemic, with the London boroughs of Newham, Harrow and Brent at one point seeing some of the highest death rates in the country. Today, a review from Public Health England confirmed people from ethnic minorities are more likely to die with COVID-19 than white people. Well, the Health Secretary spoke earlier of the urgent need to understand why. Now, the tall, glimmering towers of Canary Wharf have been empty since lockdown started, with employees switching the smart skyscrapers for makeshift offices at home. Today, the boss of Canary Wharf said he believes they will be back as businesses adapt and that London will emerge from the pandemic stronger than ever. Chloe Keady reports. <laughs> During the pandemic, we've all wanted to show our appreciation for the NHS and one student from East London decided to connect volunteers with time to spare to key workers by writing them letters of support. Letters for the NHS is the idea of East London students. Now, you might have failed to notice that today has been another scorcher across the capital as Sally Williams managed to find at one of the few places to cool off. Sally, the Hoff has got nothing on you, that's all I can say. Um, <laughs> was it as amazing as it looked? <laughs> it was a little bit nice. I've got to sort out my swimsuit. Those yeah, are my husband's well, shorts. All right. It helps that it was such a warm day and there's more well, time, right? I know, and that's going to change, actually. Oh. We've oh. had that beautiful... Finally tonight, they have been on the front line in the capital's response to coronavirus, and now three Londoners are on the front cover of Vogue. A supermarket shelf stacker, train driver and NHS midwife all feature on separate covers for the July edition. They are 21-year-old Anissa Omar, who works at Waitrose, Rachel Miller, who delivers babies at London Hospital, and Nargis Horsford, who works on the London Overground. Well, Editor-in-Chief Edward Annenfall said, there has been a shift in who we look up to and admire, and these people need to be celebrated, as Katie Barnfield reports. And that is it. I will be back with the latest after ITV News at 10. Coming up, Mary with the ITV Evening News. But from me and the rest of the London team, bye-bye. Take care.